I'm Dr. Mark Lomax. I'm happy to be here. I feel like these things are in the way. So we have 20 minutes to talk about a lot of stuff. And I was asked to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that is rhythm. I've been a drummer since I was two years old. I'm a preacher's kid, so child labor laws don't work in the black church. <laughs> you know, there are pictures, and I'll probably show one that has me at the drums at, as a kid, and they made me practice so I could be there Sunday morning playing for the children's choir, which my mother directed and wrote music for. Um, I became professional as a musician at 12, again in the church. I started touring at 14, started playing with Wynton Marcellus and people like that when I was 15, 16 years old, put out my first record when I was 19. In 2019, I put out that 12 album thing La talked about. And to date, who is this, 2023, 20, I've done about 67 records. So as a drummer, that's a lot of work. It's because, you know. <laughs> and, you, you know, you think about rhythm when you do that kind of work. And because I've been thinking about rhythm my whole entire life, I think about it a little differently than others. So I hope at the end of this talk, you don't think I'm crazy. You just think I'm brilliant. Because <laughs> there's a fine line. <laughs> between genius and nuts, right? And I happen to kind of tread, you know, not very de delicately, depending on who you ask. Uh, let's see. So I like to give the answers first. And my students don't always appreciate that because they often miss the first day of class. And I've given them the whole answers for the whole semester. And then they're, the rest of the semester, they're like, what is this dude talking about? You should have been here the first day, right? So three keys to today's talk. One is that rhythm is the key to the universe. Everything vibrates. Therefore, everything has rhythm. If we don't understand that, then the rest of what I say will not make sense. So can we agree that rhythm is the key to the universe because vibration and frequency? Yeah. Cool, okay. Two, we've been programmed to suboptimal vibrations, frequencies, rhythms. The whole freaking planet is out of balance which means we are not optimizing our individual and collective grooves. But we can do it. And hopefully by the end of the talk, I've given you some ideas on how we can optimize our, our groove. The last thing, because it's not on this particular thing, for some reason, my Mac stuff is not working. I got to call people. Um, it's out of balance. Rhythm is the key to everything. But here, here is the ultimate point of this talk that when we find our own grooves and put those grooves together to create polyrhythm, we can change the world, all right? So everyone thinks they know what groove is, and how it feels. So let, let's see if it's true. I'm gonna play some examples. And I just want to observe you and you observe each other and see how you respond to these grooves. Hey, hey. Okay, folks are moving. Okay, 15 seconds, you should stop soon. There you go. Next one. Heads are nodding. That's Riri right there. You know what I'm saying? The longest funeral ever. <laughs> All right, what about this though? Ah, it's a different kind of groove, huh? A little different groove. It's not right. Okay. What about this one? Yeah. A little Caribbean mind, right? Okay. So did you notice? Did you notice how you felt with each iteration of groove, even when it changes? Like it takes you a second for that little classical thing, but when you feel it, it's like, oh, okay, there it is. Right, okay, remember that, right? Is this the picture? Okay, so I just wanna let you know, that's what car seats looked like in the 70s. We were not safe. We were, it was like going on a roller coaster every day, like. And that's also my Muppet Baby's drum set. And my nickname in, in uh, gospel music circles is Animal. 
because I used to have dreads and I would play, and here we go. And then those drumsticks were made by my grandfather from the tree outside his house. So when I say I've been dealing with rhythm my whole life, here's the evidence, right? I'm not just making this up. I've had a special relationship with rhythm and I see it all over the place, right? So in the physical world, everything vibrates at a particular frequency or rhythmic groove, right? At the atomic level, protons and neutrons are spinning, revolving around the nucleus, right? And they're doing that in sequence, in concert, at a particular pattern. That's rhythm, that's groove, right? In the realm of even further, the unseen, right? Much of what we think of as spirit is simply stuff that's vibrating at a frequency that we can't perceive with our physical senses, right? But we can sense it or perceive it with the other senses that we don't get taught about. Because if you know that part of yourself, you can't be controlled, right? So once you become aware and engage all of who you are, finding your groove, then it's easier to understand how powerful we are and our ability to change the world when we work together, right? I was talking to Brandy, and I appreciate Brandy and Sandra Lopez for inviting me here, but I was talking to Brandy the other day, and she was asking me, okay, we're not checking what I'm gonna say, because people check what I'm gonna say because they don't ever know what I'm gonna say, because I kind of just say stuff, and I think it's great, and then people are like, oh, you in trouble, and I was like, <laughs> right? Because again, once you understand who you are and live into that, you have to be maladjusted, as King said. Right? King said, I'd rather be maladjusted until the world is something I can adjust to, meaning more just, humane, equitable, inclusive, in our case in America, democratic. All the things, right? So uh, once you, well, what I said to Brandy was, if I, I can't control you if I allow you to know you. I can't control you if I allow you to know you. Knowing yourself, on, on the wall of one of the uh, great structures in Kemet, uh, what the Egyptians call Egypt or Egyptos, it says, know thyself. And they also have an axiom, as above, so below, right? So to know God is to know thyself. In this case, God is not this ephemeral thing that's a part of religious dogma. God is the highest manifestation of who we are. It's the unifying principle, the unifying rhythmic principle, the unifying vibration, where when you get into that space, the inner verse, to know yourself, you actually get to know everybody else, right? So when we get to that point, not only can you change the world, but you're able to change the world because you've accessed your power, you understand how to leverage your power in community, and you're more apt and able to recognize when somebody's fucking with you. And by extension, how society has been designed to keep us from being our best and greatest, most optimized selves, right? So that's why rhythm is important because you have to understand your groove and your rhythm to recognize everybody else's and then move in concert. This is polyrhythm, synchronicity, which I'll get to in a second, to make change happen, right? As I said, rhythm is the fundamental element of the universe. Everything vibrates, everything moves. I am no different from this chair. This chair is no different from this water. How do I know this? Because of an area of physics called cymatics. Anybody heard of cymatics, C-Y-M-A-T-I-C-S? A couple people, cool. There's a great book called Messages from Water by Dr. Masaru Emoto, now deceased. He said, he found rather, that when you put tap water under a microscope, you don't see anything. Everybody's looking at me like, duh. <laughs> so he freezes tap water, and he tries to look at it, doesn't see anything. So he unfreezes it, looks at it under a microscope, doesn't see anything. He's trying different ways. Like, what's, what's water? Now he has this idea. He takes water from the tap, puts it in a room, has 12 or 15 people, and they look at the water, and they bless the water. He freezes it again, puts it under a, a microscope, and where before he saw nothing, now he sees these beautifully formed geometric shapes. All anybody ever did was talk to the water. Where those shapes come from? He took the same tap water, 
Same group of people. Had them around the circle and they cursed the water. Froze it, put it under a microscope, and now the shapes are deformed. All they did differently was say negative things about the water. Our speech also vibrates. Our speech not only vibrates in terms of energy and sound waves, but it has intention behind it. And those intentions inform and infuse the energy vibrations that come out of our mouth with uh, energy that affects the physical world. So when we speak well of each other and ourselves, we're actually healing ourselves at a molecular level. When we speak negatively about ourselves and each other, we are destroying ourselves. So the first thing is, not only is rhythm the key to the universe, we have to understand our rhythms, so we speak well. Speak life into the world. So we're healing the world with everything we say. I am not perfect, I will cuss you out. But I feel really bad afterwards. <laughs> Because I know what I did. And so maybe by the time I'm 50, I won't cuss people out to the extent that I'm so apt to do now. Yeah, you will. <laughs> I need to have hope. I need to have hope. And I need you all to help me. Right? <laughs> I'm trying to get to the point where I am mature enough spiritually and, and, and have evolved enough within myself. That even, I, this is me, I'm talking to me. Right, that even when things happen that I don't agree with, that I can find something constructive so I can ensure that the water continues to heal and grow. Because it's my responsibility whether I destroy or whether I heal. And it's each of our individual responsibilities to do the same thing, right? Rhythm is an interesting thing because it can exist independent of other rhythms. I mean, that's a rhythm, but nobody's nodding their head because <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. A rhythm that exists alone, in my view, for this purpose is arrhythmic. It exists, but it has no purpose, no function. Now, if I'm doing this, now people are starting to like, huh, because now, Two rhythms are happening, and they're working in partnership to create groove. <laughs> so let's do an exercise, all right? From you right here next to Steve, over, you all are group one. From Steve over, you're group two, all right? We're going to do three rhythms, one, two, three, right? Check this out. Over here, I want you to do this. You can clap or you can stomp or you can do whatever you want to do, right? Don't speed up. One, one, right? Over here, I want you to do. Don't speed up. It gets harder. And stop. Now here's what's interesting. You just created a rhythmic family. In the African rhythmic tradition, you all would be the father groove. You're the fundamental, the, the foundation upon which all the other rhythms are built. The African tradition, you'd be the mother rhythm. You're holding everything together. <laughs> Some people are like, huh, why did they have the foundation? <laughs> Foundations don't hold things together. You just build on them. Right? The mother rhythm is what keeps everything together. I played the baby rhythm, the erratic little. <laughs> right? But everybody has a role. Everybody has a purpose, everybody has a function, and we create a groove. That's how society should function. But if you play your rhythm, you play your rhythm, and I just. I'm messing the rhythm up. I'm messing it, I'm offbeat, I'm arrhythmic because I have not synchronized 
with the established fundamental. And I'm not working with the rhythm that's holding everything together. I'm trying to do my own thing. That's called capitalism. When we live in a society that is structured to extract resources at the expense of our humanity, that's not optimal, right? Not only is it suboptimal, it can be evil. I'm not against people making money. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the values, the anti-human values that come. Why do we have an issue with climate right now in the, in the planet? Why is Ohio still passing stuff to frack? We know the planet's dying, and yet, well, you know, there's a little oil there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I try. I try. Right? There are several examples of synchronicity, which we just experienced in this group, right? Uh, clocks. If you put 20 clocks on the same wall, they'll tick at different rhythms for a little bit, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> They start grooving together, right? I have a, a house, sorry, I have a house full of women. And my wife, no, this is great. Because it's not my problem. <laughs> my wife was all, you know, she, there's per, parts of the month that's not her best parts, like she's not that happy. But it was fine before our oldest daughter synced with mom. And then the pool of the moon got heavier. And then when our youngest daughter synced with oldest daughter and mom, now everybody's like, Ugh. that's synchronicity. That's, I mean, I don't know any more visceral way for a human being to experience that, right? One other example is in a dance club or when you go to a concert, right? If you're dancing, and I'm thinking about a particular groove right now, everybody's at the club like, Right? So you might go in like, ah, you know, I'm here with my friends. I don't really want to be here. But then it's like, hey. Right? What's happening there is you're getting in sync. And here's what's interesting about synchronicity. Not only do you feel the rhythm collectively together and you're dancing, even though your physical manifestation of that rhythm might not be something that some would consider on beat, <laughs> you're still feeling the same rhythm, right? But your heart literally starts beating in sync. What happens when you get a whole society's heart to be in sync? See, rhythm is deep, yo. Yeah. Right. So one of my favorite people in terms of scholarship that helped me come to certain understandings about what it is I'm purposed to do is Linda James Myers. She wrote a book called Optimal Psychology, an Introduction to an African Afrocentric Worldview. And she's where I get the optimal versus suboptimal language. Right. Uh, she says that optimal means good and in her view, African centered because it's holistic, it's collective. It's Ubuntu, I see you. Oh, sorry, Salbona is I see you. It's Ubuntu, I am because you are, and because you are, I am. It's not suboptimal. I think, therefore, I am. I argue that the, the truth is somewhere in the middle. It's what I call collective individualism. Because you play the rhythm, individual. You play the rhythm, individual. And I play the rhythm, individual. But when we put all those rhythms together, we made a groove. You can be yourself. And if we are in a position as a society where our hearts are beating in sync, we are accepting each other as you are because you are. And in accepting each other because we just exist as human beings, we find not just synchronicity, because obviously we're not doing the same thing for the same reason. We find polyrhythm. Synchronicity, we're moving the same, we're doing the same, we're feeling the same. Polyrhythm is we're doing our own thing in a way that complements somebody else's thing. 
there is room for everyone. We just have to intentionally appreciate and value each other's humanity for the sake of their humanity, right? So optimal is doing exactly that. Uh, Suboptimal, where are we at? Where is my thing messed up? Where, what does it say? Oh. Oh, my thing messed up. Okay, I'm gonna do this because I only got a few minutes left. So here's the thing. Suboptimal is the opposite. That chart shows, like, at the bottom, it's our base physical reality. At the top is what it calls our divine reality. It's not dogmatic or religious. It's that place where we find our most optimized expression of humanity, which incidentally comes from going inside, what I call the universe, to find yourself, where you find everyone because you don't exist without everyone else. That's the reality. So if I harm you, I'm harming myself. Wow. If I valued myself to the extent that I would never harm myself, then I can't harm anybody else. I can't harm you. So imagine what our gun violence rates would be if we taught our young people to value each other the way they value themselves. Or better, if we taught them that they are valued from the beginning. What would homelessness look like unhoused? There wouldn't be a thing. What would prison look like? There wouldn't be a thing. What would po uh, poverty in general look like? Wouldn't be a thing. What about health care? <laughs> the reason why Dr. Myers uh, used African-centered worldview as a fundamental principle is because prior to colonialism, there were no jails. I met someone uh, in 2016 from the Congo who didn't have a word in her uh, mother tongue for orphan. If you don't have a word for orphan, they don't exist. That doesn't mean parents don't die. It just means that child never goes uncared for. After rites of passage, I get a house. I'm never homeless. And I get that house predicated on the knowledge that I will use that plot of land I have to contribute to the whole. And I have value, and I have a place, and I have a purpose. So let me end with this thing, right? I was gonna talk about my band and all this other kind of stuff because they're cool dudes, right? I'm not gonna do all that. Um, I'm gonna skip to the end, right? The way we change the world is by intentionally doing the heart work to optimize our rhythm and find our groove. How do you do this? You gotta turn shit off. Your best self is not on TikTok. Your best self is not on the news. Your best self might not even be in that good self-help book by Eckhart Tolle, whom I love. It's more than likely right here. You. Spending time with you. Loving you. Knowing you connects you to everything else in the world. It's an oxymoron because we think in order to connect with people, we have to be with people. That's, a, that's the next step. First, you have to be comfortable being with you, right? Once you're comfortable being with you, you connect with others who are comfortable being with themselves, and that's when you start to change the culture. I call it activating trust. You learn to trust yourself. You find a group that you can trust. What uh, the Fock meet the Fockers, you know, De Niro said, it's the community of the circle of trust, right? <laughs> In that circle, you are learning what you need to do and how you need to engage the world to, to create a larger circle of trust, right? You're building trust, you're building, you're building. When you start doing the work of transformation, that's activating that trust. That's working out of your optimized position. And I might be as optimized as I can be today, but tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be better. So it's not an end, it's a journey. Right? And lastly, 
when we've gotten to the point where we're working toward transformation, we are actually practicing a politics of humanity, which is the title of my forthcoming book. <laughs> right? What is a politics of humanity? A politics of humanity assumes that politics is the conversation of the who, what, when, where, how, and why of power that centers us, human beings. And when it's human-centered, in an optimized way, we are operating in balance with each other, the globe, and the cosmos. As above, so below. When we are operating from our higher selves, everything down here manifests in ways that work for us and everything else. You might make a billion dollars selling oil, but you're killing the world and you've killed your grandchildren. You killed yourself. Why would we do that to ourselves if we cared about ourselves? People want to talk about all these black and brown kids shooting, but all these white men in, in C-suites are doing the same thing. And everybody in between is stuck because most of us want to be like those dudes in the C-suites. Let's be honest. That's the society we've been socialized in. We demonize the folks that we can openly and readily see not being optimal. <laughs> but having the kind of wealth and power that creates inequality is not optimal either. I'm not demonizing any person. Everybody's acting within the realm and context of their socialization. These are just the poles that our society has said are bad and good. None of that is true. It's all bad because we've not defined what's good. Because nobody has defined, quote unquote, good in a way that's optimal for all of us. And the only person who can do that is not an individual, it's us. So I will end this way. There's research from uh, Erica Chenoweth and others that shows that over the last 100 years, uh, nonviolent, sustained political engagement has, over the course of 10 years or so, created more lasting social transformation than violent rebellion and revolution. But you need 3.5% of a given population to make it work. So here's the call to action. Please, join me on the journey to being an optimized, fully realized human being. It's a daily thing, right? You can hit me up, we can talk, we have coffee, talk amongst yourselves. We, we're working together, individually and collectively. And then we have to find 12 million more people. <laughs> it's not a lot. It's roughly 3.5% to do the same thing. And we might not get the answers we seek in this generation because we got a lot of work to do in America, <laughs> right? But we can begin to educate the next generation and maybe in their lifetimes, we can have the change that we want to see. Rhythm is the foundational principle of the world. And when we find our own rhythm, we find an expression of unity that can transform the world. Thank you. <laughs>